Nutrition and Meal Preparation, Unit 4. Fact or fiction, elderly people don't need much to eat because they are not growing. This is false. The reason why this is false is because body cells are constantly being replaced and repaired and they need nutrition to be able to do that. The body <clears throat> always requires fuel. Energy is fuel, so food, sugar, things need to be into their body so that they can actually function. And then the need for nutrients actually increases with age, sometimes due to disease, sometimes stress. Sometimes it's just the natural process of aging. People wrinkle as they get older, they lose weight and they start to wrinkle. It's because that smooth muscle that's sitting right underneath the skin is starting to break down because they don't have enough protein. So it's always good to supplement with an insurer or something that is a high protein shake. They can't physically eat all the protein that they need, but if you can help supplement with shakes, that would be beneficial to them. These are some things that are going to affect your patient's nutrition <clears throat> and eating habits. Their appetite, are they hungry or not? Um, personal preferences, do they like what has been served? If they don't, they're not going to eat it. Are they sick? Do they have problems chewing or swallowing? In this regard, if you notice that there's problems with chewing and they seem to be chewing the same bite over and over and over and they need to be reminded to swallow, or if when they swallow, they cough or <clears throat> seem to clear their throat a lot, um, maybe get the nurse involved and have her order a speech therapist to come out and make sure that the swallowing mechanism is working appropriately. Cultural, culture, religion, and finances are all going to play a part in the nutrition and the food choices that they have. When you are helping to um, maintain or make a, a guide for your patient as they're eating, because you're going to be there and that may be part of your role, um, you need to understand we need to try to get three three meals a day in. Some people need five or six. If they're diabetic, they're going to need six smaller meals a day. So um, breakfast and then a snack around 10 or 11 and then lunch around 12 or 1 and then um, a snack around 3 or 4 and then dinner around 5 or 6 and then snack again at 8 or 9. So that's going to be kind of the typical for your diabetic patient of small meals so their body's constantly burning energy and constantly burning that fuel. You need to consider the cost of the food. You're going to go buy food for this client, but if they don't have the funds to, you know, purchase the, the best things at Walmart or Whole Foods store and they need to go to Dollar General to get some of those items at a cheaper rate, you need to know what the food costs and then um, help plan accordingly so that financially they're not strapped for food. There is a program, Meals on Wheels. It does not operate all the time, but it is a service that will bring hot meals. They will also um, deliver frozen meals that can go in the freezer if your client is able to heat something up for later in the day when there's nobody there. Um, appetites can change due to these reasons. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing, if you look down here, not having sufficient variety of food because you get bored with the food choices, so sometimes you need to switch it up. Um, meals should be attractive, they should smell good, they should be a variety of colors, they should be interesting, they should be something that the client wants to eat. If it does not look appetizing, they are not going to be in the mood to eat it. Also, if they're not sitting at the table, they're likely not going to be um, getting as many calories as if they were, um, if they're, yeah, if they're not sitting at the table say they're sitting in their recliner, they're probably not going to eat as much. If they're in their wheelchair, they're not going to eat as much. Why that happens, I'm not sure, but it does happen. So make sure they're at the table as much as possible. Now, some people have never eaten at the table. If that's not their preference, if that's not what they do, then don't worry about that. But if it is their preference, don't shortchange them because it's too difficult to move them from one place to the other. Don't, don't change it up because of your convenience. <coughs> Nutrition is, ba nutrition is basic for maintaining health. It gives energy to the body. It provides growth. It helps to replace body tissues. Um, poor, body, poor diet and eating habits will affect a person's mental and physical functioning. So make sure you're, you're serving appropriate amounts and an appropriate variety of foods that your client will eat. If they're not going to eat vegetables, probably need to get a V8 shake, something for them to eat to get the vegetables rather than the food itself. Um, importance of adequate nutrition, you can read through those. 
um, foods that are going to help the body be well nourished um, are there's six different nutrients proteins carbohydrates fats minerals vitamins and fluids those are all necessary for good nutrition you need to make sure that they're getting a variety of each of those non-nutrients are indigestible they're derived from plant foods such as fiber they increase the bulk of the stool so they make going to the bathroom elderly clients have um, problems with constipation so having these non-nutrient foods um, helps increase the bulk fiber in their system so then they can have bowel movements on a regular basis. Sources of fiber that are derived from plant foods such as whole wheat or bran, rice and pastas, holes and skins of vegetables, so like the apple, the, the peel of the apple is higher in fiber than the actual uh, meat of the apple. But some of our clients cannot eat the peel of the apple because it's too hard to um, one chew and two break down in the stomach so you need to know that normal daily fluid requirements are 2,000 milliliters to 2,500 every day Decre dehydration is a huge problem for our elderly population so one because they just are not as thirsty their body just is telling them they don't need it and they do so you need to encourage them to drink but also some other reasons that they could be dehydrated you as the home health aide, need to keep an eye out for these things. These are signs of dehydration. If they're, they seem to be thirsty, if their mouth is dry, if they've got cracked lips, if their skin is dry, you can take and pull up on their skin and it should come straight back down and just without any, any lag time. It's called tinting. And if you, if you grab their skin and you pull it up and it stays up in a tinted air and it takes a long time, then it's a sign of dehydration. Mental confusion as well increased urine infections as well are all signs of dehydration and not getting enough fluids okay so basic food groups we need to make sure our clients are getting them it kind of follows suit with um, what we talked about so you've got your grains your vegetables your fruits your milk and your meats and beans these are your proteins your dairy your um, fruits and vegetables obviously and your carbohydrates are over here in the grain section so make sure um, they're getting a little bit of everything unless they are allergic or have um, aversions to them. But you, you can go through and see what's provided in each of these. Um, proteins are what is required for tissue building and sores. If they have um, any type of skin breakdown, they need additional protein. Vegetables provide energy to the body, um, plus minerals and vitamins. Carbohydrates are energy. Um, but you know, some of our some of our clients now are having celiac or they're having problems with gluten. You need to eliminate all of the carbohydrates basically that come from gluten sources, such as wheat, rye, and barley. Every place or every um, food um, preference, I don't know. Fats, oils, and sweets are always included. They need a small amount of butter, small amount of chocolate. That's kind of just to keep things flavorful and interesting. And then fluids, different ways that you can get fluids, anything that's liquid, anything that started out as liquid and will return to liquid at room temperature is considered a liquid, and those help with dehydration. Um, your daily recommended amounts are going to vary by the size of the person, by the age of the person, so understand that. You don't need to know these, you know, per se. You just need to be aware of how to figure them out. So you would go to um, your nurse, you would try to figure out, you know, basically well-rounded diets. And there's always the My Pyramid that you can Google to find out the most recent recommendations. Um, a clear liquid diet, if you're, if you're residents on a clear liquid diet, it means any food that when you hold it up and you look through it, it's liquid and you can see through it. If you can't see through it, it is a liquid diet or a liquid food. It's not clear. So you need to make sure it's clear. Try to stay away from red or orange because if they were to get sick and vomit, it looks like blood. So just so you're aware of that. Full liquid is anything that's liquid. Okay, custards, eggnog, soups that have no particles in them, um, fruits that are strained, vegetable juices, puddings, those are all full. Mechanical soft diet, semi-solid foods that are easily digested. If it's meat, 
it's got gravy. It's got something to make it soft. If it's a cake, it's got ice cream or some sort of a uh, drizzle over the top to make, make the food soft and not dry. High fiber foods increase the amount of residue and help uh, increase and stimulate peristalsis, which is that natural move, movement through the gut. Um, all fruits and vegetables fall into this. So understand what's in a high fiber, how high calorie diet. Um, you may have a client who's on that, so you need to know that, or calorie control. Maybe they're on a diet where they need to lose weight. These are some things you need to know what would be appropriate <clears throat> on those diets. Heart failure patients are going to be on some type of a sodium controlled diet, so you need to understand where sodium comes from, look at read labels, and make sure they're not getting too much. Um, foods to avoid right here on a salt diet or a salt-free diet. Make sure you're staying away from those. Diabetic diets limit the amount of carbohydrates and simple sugars, so understand a diabetic diet. We're just going to go through that. Low cholesterol or fat diet, um, those are some things you're going to want to avoid. Dysphagia is swallowing, so you need to, some, some clients are going to be on an altered diet due to their inability to swallow appropriately. So understand that, know what you can and cannot give them go through these, understand those particular um, aspects of a dysphagic diet. If you're preparing a diet for a menu, you need to vary it based on this, um, what's necessary, based on their preferences and stuff like that. Menu should take um, into consideration how, many, how much do they need to eat, what foods do they like, can they help prepare themselves, Maybe if maybe they can just operate the microwave so you get frozen frozen meals for them that are pretty well balanced. Um, everything should be well balanced. You, they shouldn't be too much on one and not enough on the other. Um, planning and shopping. Make sure your the food is not outdated when you are um, looking for it and getting ready to serve it. Um, follow recipes if you're cooking for them. If you don't know how to cook for them, make sure you're talking to your aide or your nurse. Um, sit down with a client to figure out what foods they want to buy, have them go with you. Um, shopping can be done. You can take them with you. you they can do it themselves um, or you can do it. So figure out when purchasing foods, you know, what, what are their specifics? What do they like? Don't buy something that they're not going to eat because they prefer a different brand. Um, check eggs to make sure there's no cracks because bacteria can enter the eggs. Um, Pans shouldn't have dents. Basically, just like when you go shopping for yourself, you need to understand how to properly store, how to, you know what is good, what is not good. Um, so you can read through all of this. There's this is a pretty bulky um, PowerPoint, and basically the information you need to know is how you would treat it at home, how you would do it at home is pretty much how you're going to do it for them making sure that you're paying attention to infection control processes um, and personal preferences. Um, be aware of allergies, preferences, make sure foods that are supposed to be served hot are kept hot and served within a timely manner. If they're supposed to be cold, they're kept cold and served in a timely manner. Oh, cute little dog. Um, serving food, you can read through all of these. A lot of this stuff is pretty basic information, um, and if you can just relate it back to how you would want it in your home, how you would want somebody to care for, for you if you were needing somebody to make meals for you, what would you want them to do for you, and then you turn around and you do that for these clients. If they can help you in the kitchen, have them help you in the kitchen. If they can, you know, if you're making a salad for them, they can maybe not open the bags, but maybe you can open the bags and put, they can put the stuff together. Um, maybe they can't use the knife because that's not really the safe thing, but you can cut up the stuff and then hand it to them and then they can put it all together. They can stir, you know, make them feel useful and a part of this process. So I know this is a lot of information. I tried to hit the highlights. Um, please, if there's any questions or concerns or you don't understand something, please let me know. Most important, understand a salt diet, understand, or a low sodium diet, understand a diabetic diet. Those are the two things you're really going to have to focus in on um, because patients don't understand those things. So 
you're going to be very beneficial to them. All right, let me know if you have questions. Bye-bye.